Hi guys, my name's Ryan and welcome to the channel. So basically we've got a new series today and what we are doing is we're going to be playing in the Scottish Lower Leagues. And as you can see, we are going as Clyde Bank, as you can see by there, I think that's right, there. There we go, sorted. So basically, Clyde Bank FC, um, a team that were thriving in the 70s and 80s, uh, playing in top divisions of Scotland, which is now the Scottish Premiership and Scottish Championship. And basically they went into a bit of financial difficulty, a bit like... Um, Wimbledon um, down in England and basically their club were ran into the deck into m like millions of debt um, their stadium was stripped um, and sold um, to Cobury Park which was also the first all round seater stadium it was sold in 1996 and eventually Claybank had to play a couple of different stadiums for a few years um, so basically they lost their identity they lost their club and eventually their club was actually sold and stripped of its assets by the, their, their owner which was then um it was bought over by a consortium and eventually that turned into Airdrie Onions. Eventually from there, 2003, Claybank then became its own identity again and kind of like a Phoenix Club and rose for the ashes and now they are in the West of Scotland Premiership which is now the sixth tier Scottish football. If anyone knows anything about Scottish football, the West of Scotland Premiership is a new league that's basically been created with the teams that were previously in the junior setup. Anyone that knows anything about Scotland knows the junior setup was its own mini league, um, within probably about the same level as it is now in terms of quality. But it, you could not get promoted, you could not get relegated. It was a four tier system, and then that was basically it. There was no promotion to the professional leagues. But now they've amalgamated them together, and now all the teams that were previously junior can now move in and uh, eventually go professional, eventually, if they are good enough and want to progress through the leagues, which is the aim of Clyde Bank. So if we go into the save right now, as you can see, we've got everything set up, we've got the logos for Clyde Bank. I've only got a few of the kits, that was the only issue I was kind of having. I've got a couple for the bigger teams in terms of teams like Rossville, Pollock, Largs, um, these are actually, some of them are older kits as well. It's just what I could get my hands on, to be honest, and I'm not the best when it comes to the kit packs. Um, so we've got a couple of that real players in there, not many. What I'll try and do is I might try and uh, gain some players and then I'll rename the players and I'll take I'll change them into the real goalies names, uh, like the real players names, which I think people would appreciate so it's a bit more realistic. As you can see, I've actually got one of our polo shirts on and that's because I used to play for them. Um, I used to play for the academy team, um, been on the bench a few times for the first team but that's as far as I really went. Uh, so we'll quickly go into it and of course I'm a motivator, that's always the way I've been and we're just going to use the badges as said there. And yeah, let's get into the save. Okay, so as you can see, that's just hired by Clyde Bank on £575 a week, um, beating Chris Hunter, who is considered to be favourite for the job. Apart from that, um, we've got some big boots to fill. As you can see, we've got a bit of history about Clyde Bank itself. Obviously, founded in 2003, was a Phoenix club, and as you can see, they've got the kind of the earlier history here, of course. Um, winning a couple of second tier and third tier titles along their, their, their old history. Um, yeah, so they were a good team back in the day, but basically the title of the series No Place Like Home basically comes from they've, they've not really had their own identity, they've not really had their own stadium for over three decades and um, Home Park, which where they are now, is, is co-shared by them and uh, another team called Joker FC. So basically these two teams together have uh, basically we, we made a stadium into a, a really good, great facility where it can expand and, and grow. Um, all of it right now is just standing, there's no real seating on it but there is potential for that. Um, it's a lovely little stadium um, in the middle of Claybank, in the heart of Claybank. So basically you've got a couple of players on loan for ha um, from Hamilton etc. And as you can see we've just basically been told to maintain a West of Scotland Premiership top finish. Um, for the next few years, that's really it. But um, to be honest, the way that we're wanting to do it is we are wanting to get ourselves up the leagues. So we'll get everything saved up and ready to go. Uh, apart from that, and just some general information about the way that series is work, we're going to try and probably do about three to five episodes per season. 
with the meaning of course we're going to try and eventually get into the Premiership so by going into Premiership it's going to take us a bit of a time so by doing three to five episodes that's roughly going to be a 40, se- a 40 episode series at the most in terms of trying to get there or that is the aim anyway um, so hopefully it goes all well and that would obviously take us probably to that, what's that maybe half a year to do it so that would probably take us to the end of FM21 which would be fantastic so basically I'm going to do all this kind of stuff off screen do all the basics that you've seen in the Toulouse save if you haven't seen the Toulouse save I'll leave the link down below but basically I'm going to do all the kind of nitty gritty work off camera and we're just going to basically look at the schedules look at some results and we'll play a few games in between and that's basically the way it's going to work so yeah hopefully all goes well Okay folks, so that's us on to the first game of the season. As you can see, we are playing Pollock at home at Home Park. It's going to be a tough game. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Pollock are going to be one of the toughest teams in the division. However, we have tried to make a few signings. We've had about a month to prepare and I'm not going to be funny. It's been hard. Probably one of the hardest saves I've done in terms of preparation. Because you're probably given a very short but a small amount of budget. So you can't really do much with it. And you're working from zero. You've got no assistant manager, no scout, no nothing. So you're basically trying to use your general knowledge, players that you can probably get, and just kind of wheeling and dealing. See, just asking players who you can bring in, do a few trials. So we managed to bring in a few players. Some of them good, some of them bad. Um, we've not really got rid of anyone as such. We've had a few offers in for Dominic Irvin, but at the moment I will get rid of him. But at the moment, I just can't get rid of him due to just the lack of players that I've got. Dylan Cole's been uh, given an offer, but I've tried to offer him a new contract. He's on a free, so there's nothing I can really do about it. However, I would like to keep him because he looks like he's going to be a prospect for the future. Apart from that, we're basically just working with what we've got. Um, we've brought in, let's see who we've brought in. We've brought in a few trialists uh, that we've eventually signed on uh, permanents. And it's not really given us a proper transfer history. Here we go. Let's see, so we've brought in Lee Gallagher, Grant Savory, Danny McKenzie and Kieran Jack. So we've only brought in the four. Our budget's not particularly good either. As you can see, we've got a £0 wage budget. So we're basically just working on wage spending. Um, and we've got a committee spending on 1100 And at the moment, our wage budget's only 990 So we are overboard. It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a very tough one, to be honest. We're going to try and develop as much as we can. We brought in a few staff members as well. Uh, if we just go on to our staff overview and coaches. So we brought in assistant manager, Alan McGregor. Of course, everyone's part-time. It's a part-time club. Semi, Semi-pro, semi what else can you get? So, yeah. Uh, I'm kind of just try to work with what I've got here. Try to see, like, the majority of people you're getting, the attacking and defending is pretty right and crotting. Like, you're just working with within your means here guys it's, it's a real hard one I must admit uh, and as you can see we're kind of we're not anywhere near the average or near the, we're, kinda, we're pretty bad to be fair everywhere but hopefully uh, as time goes on we can improve that as long as we don't get sacked that is but the main man that we're probably looking at is going to be a big threat for us that we've brought in is probably Grant Savory this is a guy who's played for Celtic Youth Academy he came through the ranks at Celtic. He was on loan at Edinburgh City last year, so he was still playing in the professional divisions last year. So hopefully he can do us a little turn this year. Uh, apart from that, our probably our main main threat is going to be Lee Gallagher. Uh, same again. There you go. Four and a half stars, four and a half potential. Decent left side midfielder. Hopefully he can bring some decent potential to us. And then this is probably our best man in terms of pure raw potential. Four star ability with five star potential. This guy Ben Cameron looks a player. He's naturally a right back, but we are playing him centre half, so hopefully he turns out to be just as good in centre half, along with uh, Michael Bailey and uh, Joe Slater. They are a couple of good players elsewhere. So, yep, yeah, let's get into our first game against Pollock. We've kind of just done all the tactics off screen anyway. I'm just trying to work within our means here. I'm trying to keep it as tight as possible because we're not really got a great squad in terms of uh, quality. So we can't really just go all guns blazing. We kind of need to be conservative by the way we play. A bit cautious. So as you can see, we're going to play a 4-4-1-1. We're going to play direct counter-attack. Basically, just keeping it simple as you do with players at that level. You don't want to really go into any great depth or detail in terms of trying to play from the back, trying to make them work the ball because they just naturally can't do it. So we're going to try and play a bit more direct. Hopefully it comes off. 
Okay, so we're getting the first attack of the game despite early Pollock pressure. And it's a header off the crossbar. Can we get it over the line? No, we cannot. And it's back out to Grant Savory here on the left-hand side. Plays it into the back post with McIntosh. Recovering the ball, playing it back into Linus. And it's into the keeper's hands. Okay, so we've got one last attack of the first half. Here you can see it's a throw-in for Pollock. We managed to get it clear. Can Grant Savory do anything with the ball? He's trying to play it back to Cameron. Into the midfield with Jack. Into Slatery. He plays it long into Linus. Linus into Savory. Uh, it looks like the whistles are going to go in about 20 seconds time. Let's see if we can get anything out of this game before half time. And it's a long ball into Savory and Savory puts it wide. Good chance. Probably not the best chance of the first half. However, it's one of the best chances that we've had so far. And it looks like we're creeping into the game. We wouldn't say we're probably the best team in the game. But we're definitely creeping into it. Um, yeah, so we've been a better team here, I would say. Uh, we started off quite slow, but we definitely became the stronger force in the game. Hopefully long may that continue into the second half and maybe get that first goal of the game. Okay, so we're going to make a first substitution of the game with 67 minutes gone. Probably a wee bit later than probably expected. However, we're going to try and see what we can do in terms of who's coming off, who's looking tired. So it looks like McIntosh is the man who's the obvious one to come off. And I think we'll play Liam Harris up front as well for Grant Savory and see how that goes. Grant Savory obviously been our main target man, but he looked like he was a bit tired, so we'll bring him off, see if we can do anything with the game. Okay, so there's one minute to go, and it looks like that will be full time here at Home Park. First game of the season against Pollock. Probably one of the top players, uh, top teams in the league. And we matched him. Um, for most of the game, to be honest, for shot for shot, for pass for pass. We gave a good account ourselves. I uh, can't really fault the effort from the lads. They've done well. And that's the kind of performances that we will need the rest of the season. It's going to be tough. It's going to be gritty. But hopefully, as you can see, the results against teams like that, we will be sitting in a good position in the table later on. Right, yo. So we're going into our second game of the episode. We're around about five or six games into the season now. We're going to be playing Auckland Talbot at home. Auckland Talbot have always been the kind of team to beat within the junior setup, so hopefully it'll be a very intriguing tie. If we quickly look at the Premiership table, as you see, Talbot in third, we're in sixth. However, if we win our game, we will leapfrog them into third place, hopefully. And uh, yeah, everything's looking pretty well for Clybank, to be honest. We're not um, doing too bad. As you see by the, the, the schedule, we've, uh, since the Polar game, we've won three and drawn two. And I'll just quickly point out this one. This is the one I'm only really going to say anything about. And it was, we started the game really well. We played a 4-4-2 attacking, playing second bottom. We're feeling good about ourselves. Unfortunately, they, they went down to 10 men and then scored within two minutes before the final whistle, which was really annoying. Um, I was a bit angry about that one. I might have threw the water bottle. But it'll basically take us into the next game against Talbot and quickly before we do that we're also going to check the transfer history because we have made some uh, signings as you see we brought in a few loan signings with Jordan Shelby, Scott Maxwell and James Chalmers and also bringing in free transfers with Gregor Donald, Kieran Jack and Mark Ferry so yeah on the other um, on the outs we have also got Dominic Irvin and Matthias Langer both going to Glasgow Perthshire so yeah basically the, the lineup this is the way we're playing because the way I'm playing 4-4-2 4, -4, -2, um, 4, -4 -2 Palance now was basically during the Coburnley Ladeside game, we went 2 0 down at half time, changed it to 4 4 2, went attacking, and we went and drew 2 0. So, hopefully, that formation is starting to prove a wee bit more evident and also allows us to play a second striker in Liam Harris. And Liam Harris, as you can see, he's got potential to be a really good player for us. So, hopefully, his rating can um, gradually build up and we get the most out of him. Apart from that, uh, center hat, everything's looking good. Even the guys that are maybe two and three stars, like they've got good potential about themselves. So hopefully we can just keep them, giving them a run in the game. Performance keep the performances keep going, results keep coming, and their their star ratings will eventually just build up and build up and build up. While uh, once we get further up the table and eventually maybe move out the league. So yeah, we'll hopefully go into this and we get a win. Okay, so we've got an early highlight here. Five minutes into the game. Against Alcolite Talbot, of course, Alcolite Talbot will probably be the hardest opposition we will face this season um, for man for man. They've definitely got a strong squad on them, uh, expecting lots from them. And early on, they've got a long ball into the box and we managed to deal with it pretty well. One thing I have noticed from the team early on is there's been a lot of penalties for and also a lot of penalties against. Um, 
that's something that's probably just probably to do with maybe the, the division that we're in. Maybe it's just a, a common occurrence. But as you can see, we've got Grant Savory down the right-hand side, crosses it in, into the box, but no one's there. And, uh, yeah... Our main striker probably this season is going to be Connor Linus. He's probably scored four or five goals already this season. He's doing pretty well. And as you can see, we've got Bailey down the right-hand side into Joe Slater, into Jack, into Harris. Harris hits in the back of the net, and it's 1-0 to Clyde Bank. So happy days. Uh, six minutes into the match, and that is the start that we wanted. At the moment, we've only got a balanced mentality, so I don't think we really need to change anything as such. But, yeah... Crap, Bailey and a right back into Joe Slathery and then Jack with a long ball into Harris over the defence and Harris taps into the bottom right hand corner. Great finish and that's a great goal to have and uh, that sets us up pretty nicely for the start of the game. Okay so we've got a second highlight here with Shanklin down the left hand side into Pope, into Kettings and he plays it into Sparks into Armstrong, plays it over to Wilson on the left hand side, can he get there before it goes out, yes he can, will he get across in, he drops it back into Kettering's back in, and there is Sparks, but it's disallowed for offside, I believe that will be an offside for the left back Wilson, he did look offside when it did come in, and uh, yeah, but we're going straight into another highlight here, and it's cleared by Gallagher, into Harris, Harris is going to run their defenders, is he going to play it in the right hand side, yes he does, but see if he gets to the ball, no he doesn't, and they get the counter attack, no they don't, we clear it into Linus onto the left hand side with Gallagher, Gallagher can he run down the left hand side, he does, he gets right to the byline, can he get anything from it, plays it into the back post and it is cleared by the Talbot defence, here we come again, Bailey into Jack, over the top ball, back into Harris, similar to the first goal and it's a second, great goal, basically a carbon copy of what we've seen from the first goal, it looks like that over the top ball in their defence is working a treat and Liam Harris gets his third goal of the season, second goal of the game, Putting us into fourth place at the moment. Unfortunately, not leapfrogging Talbot, but hopefully, if we get one or two more, that might come. We might even get into third place today, which would be fantastic. Okay, so we've got a highlight here in the 40th minute where we have just dominated the game from start to finish. Of course, being 2 off against Talbot. Here we come, Talbot on the right hand side with White into Armstrong. Plays it over the top of the defence, but is cleared by Cameron, our young centre half, who's been fantastic for us since the start of the season. And it's back into Harris for his third. And it's a good save by Hewitt, the goalkeeper, for Talbot. Same again, another over the top ball into Harris. Harris seems to be playing that role excellently. Hopefully, long may it continue into the season. And we might actually have not just Connor Linus as a good striker, but Liam Harris, who's only played the last two games, but he has been fantastic for us. So hopefully he can continue. Okay, so I think that is coming up for half time now. Yep, fantastic. As you see, the XG is far superior to Talbot. Not many shots in the game, however, the chances that we are getting, we are capitalising on. Probably the one that we missed with Harris was probably another one that we should have scored. Um, but apart from that, possession, we're doing fantastic. Pass completion rate, can we maybe increase that a little bit more? Doing well in the corners, doing well in the shots and target, we're, we're doing really well. Can't really fault the players, they are sticking to their guns, they're doing exactly what I want within the game plan, and hopefully we can get a third or even a fourth. Okay, so we've got another ch uh, chance here, highlight. On the 63rd minute, down the left-hand side, it is Donald, our left-back, and is he going to run down the wing? Yes, he is. He's going to get by their defender. No, he gets the tackle in, and they are on the counter-attack here. Shanklin into Sparks. Shanklin does not receive the return ball from Sparks, and it is cleared. As you can see, we're very direct, by the way. We're getting the, first, the straight away, we get the ball. We are looking for that over-the-top through ball. And here we go, Linus into Slatery, Slatery back into Jack. Jack plays that over the top through ball into Grant Savory, and it's in the back of the net. Tell you, Jack playing in that centre midfield role is finding that pass over the top every single time. And Ash has got three goals from the exact same type of type of ball. It is fantastic. There you go, it's just Slatery dropping it into Jack, and Jack's just finding that right hand side pocket into Savory. And by the way, what a finish on the half volley into the bottom left hand corner. And that is game finish. And I think, whilst that happens, I think it's time to make some substitutions. I am so thrilled by the way we're playing. This is probably the best game we have played since the start of the start of the season. I've got no complaints as to how we're playing. I'm just going to mix up the left-hand side a little bit and just try and run them a little bit. I'm going to bring Jordan Shelby on for Connor Linus. Give him a little rest today and we'll let Harris try and get his hat-trick. Okay, so we've got another highlight here. Hewitt, long ball up over to our defence and we drew recover the ball quite easily Maxwell what can we do with it he plays it over the top through ball into Harris who drops it off back into Slatery Slatery what can he do with it he's going to play Jack will he do it again he's looking for that same pass it just wasn't on that time 
and he's getting the ball again from their recovery. And it's Bailey on the right hand side. He plays that long ball in to Harris and is off the crossbar for his hat trick. Unlucky, that would have been a great goal and a great hat trick. Uh, yeah, so unlucky here. But it looks like we've got a free kick to Talbot in the 82nd minute. Shanklin is over the ball. And what can he do with it? He plays it over the defence and into the top left hand corner. Keeper had no chance. Now it's 3 1 to Talbot. Clean sheet's gone. However, hopefully we can hang on and get the win. I don't think we're really looking like we're too threatened within the game. Keeper got a real good touch to it. He just could not keep it out. I think he put Panda into the roof of the net actually. But I think that will be um, the game done and dusted by the looks of things. Into the 93rd minute, into the 94th, and there we are. Fantastic, we've got our second, um, I think that's our fourth win in the season, putting us into fourth place, a fantastic win, and yeah, happy days. Okie dokie, so that's us uh, basically done for the episode, so we're just going to have a quick look at the schedule and then the league table. So as you can see, we've got the South Challenge Cup second round coming up next against East Stirlingshire, uh, upper league opposition. Uh, I think we'll play that game live, uh, and then we'll leave a few games, we'll probably sim these three matches and then we'll play the Darville game uh, as their first place in the table right now and then we'll maybe follow it by a few more sims and then we'll finish the game off um, base, I think we'll maybe finish it off with a game against Cumbernauld United and then that'll be f getting us into the January transfer window and we'll maybe try and get a few freebies picked up for next season, apart from that we'll just have a quick look at the West Scotland Premier League table and as you can see we're in fourth place two points behind the league leaders Pollock uh, one point behind Darwell who we said that we're going to play in the next episode and yeah everything's going well we are undefeated for the season and uh, bring it on ok folks that's the end of this episode if you like what you've seen please leave a like down below and subscribe we've also got another series on the go we've got Toulouse FC uh, basically taking from a second division club and making them a European force apart from that we also stream on Twitch most days uh, mostly doing football manager saves and FIFA so my name's Ryan and I'll see you all next time. Bye.